I've got a couple logs here. There's one that's about eight and a half feet and one that's about 12 and a half feet. This came out of a fairly good sized tree. It's about 30 inches on this log. This is the butt cut. This tree died in our yard and I should have cut it earlier than we did probably. If I'd cut it a year ago, I would have been much better off. But we're gonna try to get some one by 12s out of this. We're having kind of a, I wouldn't say a plague of pine beetles coming through our area and they're taking out a lot of our, our yellow pines and I really hate to see that. And this is one that, that they got. This is a big pine in our, in our yard and I really hated to lose this thing, but we did. And now we're going to try to get something out of it. And she's down. I need some one by twelves. This thing is way too big for the HM126 mill that we have, so I'm gonna take my chainsaw and do the same thing I did to it, or these that I did to the big log that we milled out for a, a long beam to go across the wide opening. But this bark is just slipping right off. You can just reach down here and just pull it off real easy. You can see that there's quite a bit of damage in that, but I don't wanna waste it. So I'm gonna trim it up some to where I can get it on the mill and see what I can get out of it. I'm gonna take my, what I use for a barking spud and just knock this loose bark off of there. And then I'll have to clean it up so that I can snap a line on it. It's just flaking off. Well, maybe I can kind of clean that off a little bit so I can see a line, get a chainsaw and go at it. Well, I've got him up here. I know I've got some bad punky wood right here on the top and on the bottom. Got quite a bit of weight off of it. I was able to lift it, pretty good load. I'm just gonna start slabbing off here, just pieces till I get down to some solid good wood, which I'm pretty sure that I will once I get that right in here. There'll be some good stuff. And hopefully I can get some 112s. Well, somehow or other, I got that square. I'm happy with that. This is some of that damage here, bug damage that I've got to try to cut off of there. Yeah, I'll know now, once I see the needles to start to turn brown on a pine tree, 
if it's something that I notice around here, I'm going to try to get it down before it goes any further. Well, when you're working by yourself and you don't have enough lead in your britches to turn something like this over, I've been using the tractor and strapping it and putting the, the strap and the bite down on the bottom side so that I can roll these logs over. They're pretty heavy, a little more than I can handle by myself. So I'll take this side off here, see if I can get down below the bug damage, and then I'll get this side. We had a little bit of an afterthought where we wanted to store the mill head. This is at the end of the track. Most people have their storage rooms to enclose a small room for the mill head. It's usually at the where the head begins or where it's parked, right there. But we decided to make that area a place to park the tractor, old Uncle Tweety. And also we, we thought about the fans I have this fan over here, and I have another one, and then I'm gonna rework this old fan back here so that we can have airflow from this direction, which this is usually the direction of the prevailing winds that we get. So we decided to put the mill head, when we enclose it for the end of the day, is to put it at the other end. You can see we've extended the track. We poured more cement down here and tied it in. And you can see there's just some oak boards across there that keeps uh, the angle iron spread apart. This is track that I had built originally that is actually attached to the, the Woodland Mills track, the 10 foot, actually it's a little bit longer than that. You can cut about 10 feet and we can cut as of now 23 feet or a little bit longer if we needed to. So we actually want to have everything down here and what I'm doing is framing in a, a little kind of a lightweight floor it'll be strong enough where we can walk in there and put stuff away store blades or whatever in this little room it'll come out to the end of this 2 by 12 now what I've done I've anchored this 2 by 12 to the 6 by 8 that the that the tracks actually is supported by and it has treated two by four blocks that are sitting on top of the concrete and they're anchored to to the concrete so this was not going to be actual sawing area. I guess we could if we needed to. We could build more bunks and set them up in here. But I'm trying to get a floor framed up. This ground slopes quite a bit. We dug a little footing here. And there's a short 6x6 six six red cedar that we did the Shosugi Bon on. And you can see the height of that. And you can see the height of that one. You can see how much the ground falls. Quite a bit. So... I've got two girders cut, one sitting on the sawhorses there, and that'll go from that post over to the top of this little short post that I made. And I'll have to put some support underneath it since this is an afterthought. You know, you have to do different things when you have an afterthought to make it work. So that's what we're doing here. 